Hi, welcome to Back to School. For tonight's session, because of time limitations, the chat and mics are muted. All questions need to be directed to Dojo, and I will respond as soon as I can. By coming this evening, you'll be given priority scheduling for conferences in October. You'll receive a link to sign up Genius and Dojo after the meeting ends. Some facts about me. First of all, I'm Mrs. Nettlehurst, and some facts about me are that I have been teaching for 35 years. 34 years I've been in the Lancaster School District, 34 years in third grade, and 32 years at Nancy Corey. I was here when they built, when the school was first built. I have my master's degree in education. I have three daughters, a grandson, a grand dog, one dog, one cat, and a husband. Notice that he was in the last position. Okay, and then we have a student teacher this year who's named Mr. Yates, and he has earned his associate's degree from Antelope Valley College. He earned his bachelor's degree with honors from SNHU, and he's currently working on his master's degree and credential from um, Western Governors University. He's worked in retail for the last five years, and he's looking forward to a change of pace. Like your children, he's here to learn, and he looks forward to the journey ahead. So let's talk about Dojo. I'm the mentor for our school, so you've seen me posting in school stories, school story in previous years. Class Dojo is the most reliable way to reach me at any time. You can message me at any time, um, day or night, any day, because I turn my phone off at night, so don't worry about waking me up. Let's talk about grades. You can ask, access your child's grades in the parent portal. Colleges and human resources, resources departments do not look at your third grade report card. While grades are important, they are not the only indicator of your child's progress. Please be understanding of your child, please be understanding as your child adjusts to a new, and it won't change the screen. There we go. Routine, curriculum, tests, and all that comes with a new grade and a new normal. For most children, make sure your child is just learning and completing assignments. Not all work will be graded. Some of our work is simply tools to move on to the next step. Okay, let's talk about struggling. There are many concepts to master in third grade. And with the shutdown and with connection issues and all that, your child is probably going to struggle. Maybe not with everything, but with some things. That's okay. We will work through the tough times to learn new skills and develop character. Let's talk about late work. Late work is not truly late. I do not penalize students if their work is late. I require everything to be done and in before report cards, um, but try not to get too behind. Missing work will count against your child. So if they never do it, then it counts against them. Okay, homework. Normally I give homework. But last year, all work was homework, and um, because of the shutdown, the kids aren't ready for the kind of homework I give in third grade. So this year, your child will participate in activity-based homework. The homework goes home on Monday. It's due on Friday. Monthly projects are optional if they want to do them. So this is the paper on the left is what the homework looks like. So they'll have like a weekly chore that they do, and they'll talk about the chore, if they liked it, what they didn't like about it, or whatever. Now for the reading, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I expect them to read for 20 minutes. They should write what they read on the lines. If they read on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you can put that on the next week's homework sheet. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm not requiring to see um, titles in there, um, but it would be nice if they read 20 minutes seven days a week because children who read more um, will do better. <clears throat> then learning through play. Now this one here says making an ice cream sundae. If you don't have the items you need to make an ice cream sundae, have them make the ice cream sundae on a piece of paper, or they can do it as a, some kind of art project. They can do it with their crayons on paper. They could um, use a, some kind of a program on, on the computer to put together pieces of what would make an ice cream sundae, be creative with it. Um, and then they're going to share something about their week. So they don't need to share something every week. I'm just going to choose a few students to share. And um, so we will do sharing on Fridays. 
And if you if they want to bring in a picture, a souvenir from somewhere special they went, that's fine. Okay, so this is an example of a family project. This isn't the one I'm going to assign. I've changed it actually. Um, so, but this the the um, monthly projects are optional. You don't have to do them. Birthdays. You probably are aware we've already celebrated a lot of birthdays in our class. So I'm very happy to celebrate your child on their birthday. If you want to send in cupcakes, please let me know in advance, at least 24 hours in advance, so I can put it in the lesson plan. And make sure the package is completely sealed when it comes to school. We can't have, um, sometimes parents will take out the extra cupcakes before they send them to school. Um, don't do that. Just leave it completely sealed. And if there's leftover cupcakes, I will send them home with your child. Snack. We eat snack at 10.05. Now, lunch is about five hours after your child's had breakfast. For some kids, they eat even earlier because they go to child care or whatever. So please make sure you send a snack with your child because five hours is extremely long to go. And it's even long. If it's even longer than that, they get tummy aches and they don't feel well. Um, they do have breakfast for free at school. So if you're running out of time, get them to school and they can have breakfast at school. Uh, for snack, please avoid simple carbs like cookies and donuts. Consider higher fiber snacks like fruit, granola bars, veggies. You can also include crackers, pretzels, um, and applesauce. And there's something behind this little bar here where I'm recording. What does it say? I don't know. Oh, it won't move. There we go. Crackers, applesauce, or, oh, yogurt. Yogurt's a good one as well. <clears throat> Water. Students need water bottles. I recommend recyclable bottles because we frequently forget our bottles on the playground. So if you are concerned about your child losing their bottle, the recyclable ones are perfect because they can still refill them. And if they don't need to take it home at the end of the day, um, they I have a recycle that we put the bottles in. So um, I do have water bottles for emergencies. Um, if students forget theirs or lose theirs, I do have some water bottles in the classroom. Absences. Please keep your child at home if they are sick. Let the office know that you're keeping them home because they're sick so we know why they're out. If you suspect COVID, please get a test and inform the office of the results. You can send pictures of the results to me in Dojo and I forward it on to the office. I've done it a couple of times. I got a hard copy um, of a COVID test and I just send it up to the office. If your child is able, have him or, do, him or her do eye ready and extra math while they're out sick. Um, check Google Classroom and Class Dojo for assignments they might be missing as well. Now that we can do a lot of our work online, um, they don't have to get behind just because they're absent. Okay, spelling versus phonics. I do not give spelling tests, and here's why. Traditional spelling tests are about memorizing a list of words that have some rule or pattern in common. Some kids can spell, some kids can't. Spelling tests don't really change that. But what I have found to be more effective is that teaching patterns and sounds is way more effective to help students read and spell better. I will not be issuing a list because I don't want them to memorize a set of words. I want them to learn the patterns and the sounds. So they get plenty of opportunity during the week to practice the patterns and the sounds. You can look at Class Dojo and see what, um, what exactly we're working on. They can practice those words in there, but just because the words are on the worksheets doesn't mean that they're going to be on the test. Um, so, and I do give phonics tests every Friday. Grammar tests will be assigned about every two weeks. Our, our book seems to um, cycle a skill in a, over a two week period. So um, I will test them. Like right now we're learning about sentences when we finish the second week on sentences, which will be next week of a grammar test. Vocabulary tests will be given weekly. Um, you can find that in, um, in Google Classroom in their reading um, topic. I call them folders, the reading folder in Google Classroom you will see a focus wall and that will tell you what vocabulary words that they're working on. Phonics videos and focus walls will be posted in Google Classroom to help your child prepare for tests. Math. 
we'll be using a lot of manipulatives this year. Based upon our iReady scores, this class is going to struggle with third grade math, so we'll be doing a lot to backfill their math knowledge. A quiz is given about mid-chapter to see how students are progressing, and there is a test at the end of every chapter. I ready. They need to do 45 minutes a week in reading and then 45 minutes in math. On short weeks, they only need to do 30 minutes. So next week is a short week, so they would only have to do 30 minutes. They receive points for completing their minutes. They can earn up to five extra credit points for going over their minutes. And those that grade goes in the grade book. So their language arts grade is going to be pretty much carried by their I ready minutes. Um, and then their math grade will be pretty much carried by extra math and their iReady minutes. They'll have other points in there too, but those iReady minutes really add up. So if they're doing all their minutes, they'll do fine. And really iReady is going to be the key to getting them caught up from the shutdown. Extra math, they need to do five sessions per week. Um, make up miss sections. Okay. Extra math does not let you go back in time to do sessions, so you have to do them on the weekend if you want to make up missed sessions. So let's say that your child is missing a session on a Wednesday, it's now Thursday, have them do Thursday and Friday, and then they can make up the Wednesday one on Saturday or on Sunday. Um, students will be graded based upon their performance. So if they get a green circle, they get three points. A yellow circle is two points. A red circle is one point. If they end up with gray or nothing, they get zero. Okay, AR. We are going to be testing this week on the STAR test so that we're ready to start checking out books. Students will check out two books per week from the library on their reading level. It has to be on their reading level. Students need to test on two picture books each week. Chapter book readers should get at least one test per week. Students should strive to get 100% on each AR test. Read each picture book three times to help ensure a higher score. Chapter book readers should try to get 80% or better on each test. They do not need to read it three times. I have a system for them when, when they're ready to take a test. I have I, a little trick my daughter taught me, and I'll teach that to them so that they can do better on their chapter book tests. Library, third graders can take two books home per week. Books should be kept in the backpack at all times unless they're being read. Their backpack is like their office. So if they're reading their library books, they come out of their backpack and read them, and then they put them right back so they don't get lost. Once a student tests on a book, the book goes in our class library tub until our next library time. Additional books can be accessed in my personal library but cannot be taken home. And additional at-home reading can be accessed on Sora. Students may only test on books um, from Sora on their level. So they can read any books they want, but if they want to test on them, they need to be on their level. Uh, we do PE every day, so make sure your child wears appropriate shoes. Your child receives PE instruction from all four third grade teachers. Um, they're expected to try. They don't have to be good at it, they just have to try. I give PE grades. Students who participate get an outstanding. Uh, lower grades are given depending on the student's level of effort. Social emotional learning, also called SEL. We do social emotional learning instruction daily. We're learning to function as a peaceful and effective learning community. We learn to treat others the way we want to be treated. We learn to solve our own small problems when a problem is too big and needs to be referred to an adult. And I think that sentence is wrong. The problem is too big. Let's see, we learn to solve our own problems. Anyway, you get it. Big problems come to adults, small problems we solve ourselves. Walk to learn. Students are placed in classes with other students of similar ability level. Because of COVID, the program will be configured a bit differently than in normal circumstances, but we are still being careful. For the first semester, students will be learning to write informative, opinion, and narrative essays. Okay, this is our schedule on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. These are the times that we're in our various places, and Tuesday is on there as well. So we'd both like to thank you for coming tonight. If you have any questions, please leave them in Dojo. And this slideshow will be available to you after the meeting if you want to refer back to it. Have a good evening.